In Module 3, Lesson 23, we're going to look at the volume of a right prism. The volume of solid is a quantity <laughs> given by the number of unit cubes needed to fill the solid. Most solids, rocks, baseballs, people, cannot be filled with unit cubes or assembled from cubes. But solids still have volume. So fortunately, we don't need to assemble solids from unit cubes in order to calculate their volume. One of the first interesting examples of a solid that cannot be assembled from cubes, but whose volume can still be calculated, is a right triangular prism. So we'll start by finding the area of the square pictured on the right. We have six units both ways, and so our area is 36 square units. And of course, we did that by, first of all, counting to see how long and how wide the square was, and then multiplying those units. Next, we're asked to draw a diagonal joining the two given points, the two red points, and then darken the grid lines within the lower triangular region. So there's our triangle, and then you can darken those lines on the bottom triangular region. The area of that triangular region, and we know the formula for area of a triangle, so we're going to use that, is 1 half times the base, which is 6, times the height, which is also 6. Remember, the base and the height have to be perpendicular to each other. And 1 half times 6 times 6 is 18 square units. So how do the areas of the square and the triangular region compare? The triangle is half of the area of the square. Next in example one, we're asked what the volume of the right prism pictured on the right would be. And so to find that volume, Since our prism is 36 units in the interior and only one unit deep, we would have length times width times the depth, and that would give us 36 cubic units because it is filled with one unit cubes. Now we're asked to draw the same diagonal on the square base as we did in the right triangular, as we did um, in the figure in our opening exercise. So we're going to take and draw a diagonal like that. and you can darken in the grid. The volume of that right triangular prism would then be 18 cubic units so our volume is 18 cubic units which is exactly half of the rectangular prism. And we know that because the formula would then would be 1 half times the base times the height times the depth. So 1 half times 6 times 6 times 1. 
How could we create a right rectangular prism, a right triangular prism, with five times the volume of the right triangular prism that's pictured up here without changing the base? So we can't add on to this face right here. Draw your solution on the diagram, give the volume of the solid, and explain why your solution has five times the volume of the triangular prism. So if we stack five exact copies of the base, or bottom floor, then the prism will have five times the number of unit cubes as the original, which means it has five times the volume, which is 90 units cubed. We're taking this and we're stacking five on top of each other. Next we're asked what could we do to cut the volume of the right triangular prism in half without changing the base. And then draw your solution on the diagram, give the volume of the solid, and explain why your solution has half the volume of the given triangular prism. Now I'm going to suggest on the actual drawing that if we cut the cubes in half so that they were no longer one unit thick but they are one half unit thick, we would then have half the volume So to find the volume of any right prism, we multiply the area of the right prism space, which we're going to represent as capital B. times the height of the right prism, which is represented by H. And that formula then is volume, capital V, equals capital B, which is the area of the base, times height. In example two then, we're going to find the volume of the right rectangular prism shown in the diagram using our formula now, which is volume equals area of the base times the height. Remember, this is a triangular prism. So the base of the triangular prism is the triangle, not the rectangle. No matter which way it's laying on a surface, the base is the shape that gives it its name. So in this case, our base is the triangle. Area of the base remembers how we start. Volume equals the area of the base, which will be 1 half times 4 times 1 half, which is the height. And then we're going to multiply it by what would be considered the height of our surface, which is 6 and 1 half. And when we do that, we will get 6 and 1 half. And these are cubic meters. Just to be clear, we know where that came from. If we multiply 1 half times 4, we get 2. And we multiply 2 times 1 half, we get 1. And 1 times 6 and 1 half is 6 and 1 half. Finally, in exercise 1, we're going to look at multiple volume representations. And this is uh, very much like a composite figure that we are trying to find the area of. So we have a right pentagonal prism 
that's composed of a right rectangular prism joined by a right triangular prism. We're going to find the volume of the right pentagonal prism by using uh, two different strategies. The first one will be to put the two pieces together. So we have the rectangular And remember, our volume is the area of the base times the height. So our base being 4 times 6 and 1 half, and then multiplying times 6 and 1 half, which is our height, Will be 169 cubic meters, and the triangular prism remember area of the base, and our base has to be the triangle. So the area of a triangle is one half times the base, which is four. times one half, which is the height, and then we multiply that times the height, in this case, which would be six and one half. And again, we calculated this before, you should recognize these numbers. It's six and one half cubic meters. And then we add them together for a total of 175 and one half cubic meters. So there's method one. Now method two would be to calculate it all at one time, because if you remember correctly, the formula for volume is the area of the base, which is capital B, times height. So if we calculate the area of the pentagonal base and then multiply times the height, it will still work. Now we don't have a formula for area of a pentagon, but we can find the area of the pentagon by finding the area of this rectangle plus the area of the triangle. So the area of our rectangle, which is four times six and one half, And then we're going to add that to the area of our triangle, which is 1 half times 4 times 1 half, right? 1 half times the base times the height. And then all together, And that will give us 27 for our base. Then we need to multiply that. Remember, this is our base. We're going to multiply that times the height, which is 6 and 1 half. And 27 times 6 and 1 half is 175 and one half cubic meters.